Okie dokie, Artichokies! We're back! That was interesting. Something weird happened. I have never seen my computer blue screen before. I feel like the government may be watching. They don't want me telling you. They don't want me telling you to rise up and become leaders and be awesome. Alright, so we're going to continue with part two, right where we left off. I think I was talking about... Um, let me make sure the stream is actually stable. We are good. 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 All right. So I hope you guys are enjoying the little seminar so far. I know I am. I'm having a really, really good time. I, I always enjoy talking about stuff and just like really like telling what I believe in and just hopefully like make, making you guys think a little differently about life and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I just like sharing what I believe in. And I appreciate you guys being willing to listen. And let me practice on you for the day that I become like Jim Rohn himself and give massive seminars to thousands of people and be like, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And then everybody becomes wealthy business owners and makes comics and we have a nerd world, right? The whole world becomes a giant nerd population. And that would just make my dream come true. All right, guys. So last thing I want to do is just I want to sum up what I was saying right before we had the unfortunate cutoff of the stream. And that was that I had worked my entire life to get the job at Riot. And then I found myself asking myself that was this all there was? Was the rest of my life just meant to be me working day after day after day, doing illustration, 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 same thing every day until I die, right? And I wanted to know, what was that next thing? What's the next thing? And what this caused me to understand was that you need to, once again, you need to find happiness, you need to find joy in the journey, right? Because the journey to get that job, to get the big thing at the end, that I thought was just going to give me security, happiness, and I didn't have to do anything for the rest of my life well, after I got there, the journey was actually really, really awesome. I, really, I look back on all the things, all the hardships, all the things that I got turned down with, all of the you know stuff I had to put up with, basically. But also, I looked at all the cool things. I was like, "Whoa! I went to, I won the art contest for the first annual BlizzCon, and I got to go and I meet, got to meet Samwise Didier and Justin Thaverack and all these other art dudes. And I went to these conventions where I met you know the guy Alex Ahad who made Skullgirls, and I got to meet all these awesome artists and all these people that I looked up to." You know, back in my deviant art days, and I say back in my deviant art days, like back when I got started, I still am on deviant art, obviously. But all these people that I used to look up to in deviant art, I literally, I'd be working right next to them. They were right next to me. Like my whole, I couldn't believe how cool that was, how small the world was. And these people that I looked up to and admired so much, I got to work right next to them. And I got to ask them, you know, I get to like pick their brains about like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this design thing? What do you think about, you know, these colors or... I ask him about, whoa, how did you learn how to do that? Show me how to do that. You know, and it was like so, so fun. And I look back on the journey, and it's like, wow, that's really where all the magic is. That's where all the joy is. So naturally, again, I'm starting a company, and I want to make a comic, and I want to become successful off of it. So that's the thing at the top of the ladder. That's the thing that I'm looking to. But now I have the mentality of I am not going to rely on that to make me happy. I'm not saying, oh, I need to, I need to struggle and things are gonna suck and I need to be all ticked off, but eventually I'm gonna get there and then I can relax, right? I'm not gonna have that mentality anymore. Instead, I'm going to be enjoying every day of my life and just letting it come and go as it goes and just have the calm sense of security inside myself that it is going to happen because there's no other way. I've already basically decided in my head that there's no other way that this can go. I have to make the comic. The comic will be made. So I'm really, really happy about that. And yeah, it just, it makes me really, really happy because I've heard other people, other people have like, you know, dreams about, like, oh yeah, I want to make this comic. I want to make this story. I want to do this over here. I want to travel here. But how many people actually ever do that? It, don't you notice how that, that's a common thing? People always have this dream about something they always want to do, but slowly but surely it kind of gets pushed to the side. And then eventually it's just like, oh, well, that was just a dream. Oh, that was just something that I thought. It was a crazy thought that I had a long time ago. But, you know, that's just not the way my life was supposed to be. No! No! You don't do that. You don't push away your dreams. You don't just push them off to the side and say, oh, maybe, you know, that just wasn't meant to happen. 
No, that's not what life is supposed to be about. Life is supposed to be about you believing in your dreams and realizing the power that is within you to create whatever you want to around you. The power is all within you. You almost want to think of it as a funny way to think of it is uh, they say that you know all of your riches, all of your fortune, your wealth, everything is actually inside of you. Right? You have the power to bring it and manifest it in your life. Except you just need to learn how to work on yourself as opposed to working harder on your job. And this brings me to my next point, which is working harder on yourself than you do on your job. And that's really, really cool. Talking about the wealth and your fortune being inside of you, really I think the, the magical key to getting more than average in life is not actually working harder. It's actually developing yourself more, becoming something more, becoming greater than average, becoming that leader, that speaker, that confidence builder, that person that inspires others, that helps others, you know, that charitable person who just helps people for no dang reason, the person who always goes the extra mile, the person who does more than they get paid for, right, because they like the way it makes them feel, because they love having that feeling of I am the kind of person that just does more. I do more than what I get paid for because that's just the way I live my life, right? And that is a really, really cool way to approach life. And when you have that mentality, you become an outstanding person. And you know what outstanding people get? They get outstanding results. They get results that are different than others because they are different than other people. You know? You see how that works? See how that works? So, um, and it's not, I'm not just talking specifically about money, just your life in general. Your life, if you're an outstanding person, if you stand out, it will be different than anybody else's by some measure, whether it's just the way you feel about yourself. Having self-confidence and having, um, what's, what's the word, like uh, healthy respect and love for yourself, it, that's something that you can't buy. That's something that is all up in here. It's all mental. You, there's no amount of money that can buy it. So therefore, it is invaluable. So if you are the kind of person, even if just doing more than you're paid for and becoming a terrible person gets you that, then that is awesome, right? But I really believe that it comes to you in every way. I believe it comes to you through the way you feel about yourself, the way that you know you carry yourself, the way you uh, carry on a conversation, the way that you influence people, the way that you attract people to you. When you follow your dream, you attract people that believe in what you're doing. They're attracted to the idea of what you're doing, not necessarily the product, right? Like, for example... Um, there's this company that, uh, I forget what the name is, but they make watches that have nothing in them. It's just like a watch, it's a wristband with a, a head, a watch head, or whatever you call it, the metal thingy, and it's just empty. It's empty. It, there's no watch in it. But the idea is that, hey, this is a piece of, 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 like, jewelry or whatever, that when you wear it, it reminds you that when you're engaged in something that you're passionate about, that you love, time doesn't matter, right? And that's a great example of, you know, people buy, people buy products, I believe, because of what it represents, because of who makes it, you know, like Apple, people who love the iPad and all these stuff that Apple does. Apple has the, the reputation of always challenging the status quo, always doing something different, always doing something unique and cool and hip and kind of pushing that edge, you know? So people who buy Apple products naturally are into that idea. They like that feeling. They're like, yeah, I like to do the new thing. I like to get these things. I love playing these video games on my, on my iPad. I like doing all this stuff. I like looking at comics on my iPad. And Apple just has that really cool mentality. And same thing with this watch, you know? It's like people aren't buying it for to be a watch. It's just because they like it. Other people might look at it and be like, Pfft, you spent over a hundred dollars on a watch that doesn't work, that doesn't have anything in it. Pff, you're stupid. Why would you do that? What a waste of money. You know, but that goes back to it's not about them. It's not about what you think about it. Oh, you know, that's cool you think my watch is stupid, but I bought it for me. I bought it because when I look at it, this reminds me to never give up. This reminds me that I need to be engaged in things that I'm passionate about. Those things that make me forget that time exists. <coughs> and I like it for that reason. That's why I spent a lot of money on it, because it reminds me, it makes me think, it makes me happy, right? That's why you do it. So, uh, going uh, back to that, or uh, wrapping that up, yeah. I forgot how we got on that tangent, but <laughs> it's like people buy, people get interested in what you do because of the idea that's behind it. Maybe people like the comic 
you know, people who just go on and read the comic and stuff like that, that's cool. I, I like the people that just go on and read it and they don't care about me. They don't care about, you know, what my life is or what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. That's cool. I'm okay with that. But the people that I'm really like targeting, like if you could say like target audience for this business is actually those people that are interested in why I'm doing it, right? The reason why I'm doing it. The reason why I'm making the comic is because I want to be that kid that has the dream, that just goes for it, that makes it happen. Even if all it is is he just makes the comic. Even if he doesn't become a millionaire or anything. If I can just be that kid that had the idea that I wanted to tell a story and I quit my, my stable, safe job to do it and then I made it happen, that's all I could ask for. That's really what I want. And anybody who has those same ideals of, man, I have this dream that I want to make this happen and, man, if this guy can do it, I can do it too. If I can attract people that have those same mentalities, that's almost like my micro niche. It's, it's like the, the gamers, the nerds, the comic you know, readers. I'm a nerd myself. I love it. I want to attract those people. I want, the, I want all these people that, that have these dreams. Well, I guess um, what I'm saying is I want, I want big dreaming nerds. Big dreaming nerds. You're all big dreaming nerds out there, and I know it. So <laughs> that is my target audience. These people that have these great dreams of things that they want to do. And they want to watch some crazy kid go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, that's that's what my target audience is. So I hope that you guys get some good value out of it and you guys are interested in the things that I say. But regardless, even if you are or you aren't, I'm just doing this. I'm even talking to you right now because I like the feeling of knowing that I'm improving myself. I'm improving my public speaking skills. I'm improving my confidence. And even just talking out loud, if you're talked out loud to yourself, like sometimes I'll be driving down the street. This is rare, but it actually really helps to almost speak out loud to yourself. Be like, oh, well, my plan is to do this. Um, or you like, why, what, what am I doing with my life? That's another one. That's a good one. What am I doing with my life? What do I want to do? What, what, what's the next thing? What, what's the big thing? But also I ask myself, am I enjoying life? Am I liking, am I grateful for what I have right now? Am I grateful for what's been given to me? Do I understand how lucky I am to be living in a place where I can be completely free creatively to create some story and tell it and have this device called the internet, right? Basically just spread it out and find people that can that want to read it and that like what I'm doing and get, can get interested and support me if they choose. You know, do I realize how really truly fortunate I am to have all these things at my disposal and am I taking advantage of that so um, yeah I think it's always good to kind of sit and reflect and, and talk out loud to yourself and that's something else that I'm doing right now by talking about my beliefs to you you could be on the other end of this webcam or not but even if I just recorded this and watched it later it would be really good because it's it's that practice it's that practice of speaking out loud and when you speak out loud you, you drive it further into your subconscious you know if you want to say it that way but, uh, but I am glad that you're there. Don't, don't think that I don't care about you. I really do. I love you. I love you. All right, guys. So we got about five minutes to go since we had that little hiccup with the computer. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to... I think I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat to questions. Please ask anything that you would like me to answer. Uh, it can be philosophical or art. I don't, I don't care what it is. Any questions, catapult them over the castle walls, and I'll catch them send them back to you on a bed of grass. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and just finish up these last questions and cue up music. Cue up epic outro music. Hmm. Okay, so the last thing I want to end off with is... The realization that, and I think this is probably the most important thing that I'm going to say throughout this entire show, so make sure you listen up very, very carefully. If this is the only thing you get walking away from this, please listen to this. And that is that the difference between working hard and working smart, right? The difference between working hard on a physical job and relaxing during a creative job. Right, so I want to talk to you about some. This is a thing that has been occurring to me lately with the comic. Right, I've noticed that as I work harder, as I work, like I force myself to like be like, oh man, this is hard work. I need to just like keep doing this. I need to struggle through this. The harder you work when you're working on something creative, such as 
creating a story, creating a comic, actually, contrary to popular belief, it is actually going to turn out worse. It is going to turn out worse the harder you work on it. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Now, um, I want to tell you guys about the, the interesting kind of dichotomy that goes through this. You know, when you're working on something physical, say you're building something, you're building a tree house, right? The harder that you lug the wood up the tree, the harder you hammer the nails, the faster you do it, the better it's going to, you know, the more efficiently you do it, the better it's going to work out. You know, like make the tree house pretty quickly, it could end up being pretty crappy, but you know what I mean. The harder you work at something physical, the better and more efficiently the job will be done. But the harder that you work on something creative, actually the worse it will come out. What you need to be doing in when you're in a state of creativity is you need to relax your mind. You need to tell yourself that this is the point. This is relaxation. This is letting my skill flow out for me. My skill flows out to me naturally, right? And I am literally, like, an interesting thought that I had was, like, what if I sat down to make the comic from now on and I had the mentality of I'm going to relax, I'm going to make this comic, and I'm going to observe my body. I'm going to observe my body using the skills to make it basically come to life. I am an observer of this. I just get to relax and I get to enjoy this and I get to watch it happen right in front of my eyes. Like How cool is that? It's like I have a front row seat to watching my body creating the comic. And I think what that does for me is it takes me out of this takes me out of this mindset of, oh man, I gotta, I gotta work really hard, or is this good enough? Oh, I don't know if this is good enough. I don't know if this panel is good enough. I don't know if this setup is good enough. What if people have these questions? What if people don't like this? All right? And instead, what I'm doing is I'm kind of summing up everything that I've talked about today, bringing it together. I'm trusting my gut. So if I say, oh, I think this would look good here, bam, lay it down. And then I look at how it goes through, and then I just simply ask myself once, and be like, does this read well? Does this work well? And if I say yes, I don't question it again, and I just go, go ahead with it. And another really cool thing was I had my little brother come in here, Deeps, yesterday. And I think this is when the point really got driven home for me, is uh, I was having a little bit of, I was struggling a little bit with the latest part of the comic, because I kept asking myself, I was like, something, something is just like not here. Something is missing. Something isn't. There's something that I want to be in this part that is not being reflected. And I just tried and tried and tried to like think about it. Like, what is it? Is this character not saying the right thing? Am I not like portraying the, the right dialogue here? What's happening, right? Literally when my brother came in and we were just having a fun time, we were almost, we just basically started brainstorming, right? We, we uh, uh, what's the word? Um, we, we started brainstorming without even knowing that we were brainstorming. And brainstorming in the right way is basically coming up with all the like most outlandish, crazy, silly, stupid ideas that you could possibly think of. And then you you come across basically gold, right? Because you're not worried. Your ego is out of it. You're not trying, right? And I think that's really the, the point of it all is, is that the less you try when you are doing something creative, the more fun you have, the better it's going to turn out. Because when Deebs came in here and we were talking about, you know, something that was going to be happening in the, in the story, I don't want to give it away. But he just threw out, like, some, like, silly ideas. And I was like, oh, yeah, what, what if we did this? And then it, all of a sudden it clicked in my head. I was like, that's what I needed. That's what this part needed. And it came to me when I stopped trying to find it. Do you get that? The creativity came to me when I let it flow. When I took my ego out of it, when I stopped worrying, and I just let it flow for me naturally. So when you're working, yeah, sum all that up, when you're working on something creative, do not try. The harder you try, the worse it's going to come out. Let, the, let your skill and let your body naturally take care of it. All right? Oh, this guy is yelling outside. I think he lost his dog. Poor lost doggies. All right, let's see. What do we got here for our questions? Questions. Um... <clears throat> Hogan Warfare is saying, I'm loving Thoughtful Thursday and want it to continue. <laughs> Thank you, Hogan. Yes, I'm actually really liking it too. I think I will continue this. I think we will do Thoughtful Thursdays from now on. And we will uh, go ahead and do that. Doesn't look like there's many questions though. So, um, oh, here we go. Coming in from Taft Thompson. He asks, how do I become a good observer of the world so later I can use it in art? Um... How do you become a good observer of the world? Um, that's interesting. 
I guess it depends on what you want to use your observations for. Like if you are going to be creating like some sort of art with a message, and you create, are you just drawing what you see, right? Because those are two big different things. Uh, one thing I would say is if you enjoy drawing things, like if you're out at the park, or you're just kind of chilling on some bus stop bench, and you like looking at the buildings, or you want to draw like you know whatever. Uh, I think it's really good to have sketchbooks. I mean, regardless if you try, like to do that stuff or not, sketchbooks are awesome because as much as I love working digitally. Nothing really quite replaces physical media. The feeling of having the, the pencil actually touch the, the paper and all that stuff. I, I feel like it's really good for sketching. Uh, concept art, you know, now that I'm doing some of this for Riot, now that I'm doing contract concept work, it's always the best, in my opinion, to start with physical media. Because it just feels so much more natural. And it's really, I don't know, there's just something about it. There's a magic with using physical media with your beginning thoughts. And uh, same thing here. I mean, look, look at this. <laughs> look at this drawing of uh, Clem. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, that's a drawing of Clem that I drew in uh, in this thing. And Clem is actually coming out. You're going to be seeing Clem is uh, Tank's right hand man. He's kind of his sidekick. And um, yeah. And for those of you who tuned into the wait, was it the? Uh, no, it wasn't the director's commentary, but we have talked a little bit about Clem and how I omitted him from the previous part, and I'm going to be bringing him into this part here. But uh, I love having sketchbooks. I love just like having ideas, uh, journals, just writing things down as soon as you get them, because oftentimes you get those, this goes back to the gut feelings. You get those gut reactions, those gut feelings at the most random times. You'd be sitting down eating a burrito at Del Taco, and then you get it, right? And then you're like, oh, I'll remember that for when I get home. And then you get home and you forgot that you ever had that thought. You know, but what's really good is you keep this with you in your adventure sack. You know, if you have a bag like me, you like to tote one of these around. Or just get a small enough book that you can keep it, I don't know, somewhere. Just in your car, you keep it in the dash. Just somewhere where it is readily available to you and where you can jot down your ideas. Ah, and it will save you. It will save you. Some of the best ideas come to you. Again, that goes back to that thing where it's like your creative, some of the best creative thoughts you will have will come to you when you're not even thinking about it because you're not trying. You're not trying to force the creativity out. You're letting it naturally come to you. And that's why you get all your good ideas when you're out doing something random. You know what I mean? You're out just like, I don't know, staring at the sunset. You're out driving somewhere. You're out eating burritos and tacos. You're out listening to music. I think music is something that's very, very inspirational. Uh, you're at a concert or something. You just get these ideas. And it's because you're relaxed. You're at this, you're allowing it's almost like you're opening yourself up. You want to think of it in like a spiritual sense. You're opening yourself up and letting the universe pour its knowledge into your mind that normally it's blocked out because you're like, no, I don't need any help. I don't need any help. I'm going to find it myself. I know what this needs. I know what this needs. And then you just basically try to force it. And then, you know, the universe is trying to like put it in there or wherever you want to call it, wherever it's coming from. Idea land. <laughs> <laughs> the gods of idea land are trying to shoot the lightning bolts into your ears and you keep blocking them because you think you can figure it out yourself. But you can't. You must trust in the gods of idea land. All right. <clears throat> Singular Basan says he's coming up with a question. Better be quick. Better come up in the next few seconds, otherwise we are ending. Mm. Yeah, uh, Helgen Warfare says looking at the blank page and forcing yourself to draw never works. Yes, although I do think taking a blank page and just starting to scribble shapes, like like this is how I do concept work, right? I'll just take a blank page. I wonder if there's something in here I can show you um, that won't give anything away. Let's see here. I hope I I hope I have something. If I don't, I mean you you saw me guys, uh, you guys saw me doing something like that a few days ago. Um, I was talking about something and I was just drawing shapes on sketchbook or, or on, um, on Photoshop and uh, I'm looking through here and unfortunately it doesn't look like there's anything that I can show you without giving away what I'm working on so um, yeah sorry about that but just looking at a blank page and say hey I'm just gonna draw some shapes or hey okay here we go here we go I'll show you what I'm talking about right here today my brother and I went to macaroni grill and we wanted to kind of practice this whole thing right you get this big old macaroni grill is a really awesome Italian restaurant and there they give you these giant sheets of paper that cover your entire table right look at this 
Look at all these doodles. Oh man, I can actually get these up there. Okay, so look at all these doodles here. Uh, I was out there with Deebs, and we were practicing just drawing things for fun. We were practicing kind of getting out of your head and be like, hey, you know what I want to draw? I want to draw this thing, right? And I think there's like a giraffe in there somewhere. There's, oh yeah, there's a giraffe. <laughs> right, right there. It's hard to hold it up so it can actually be seen. But um, we were just drawing all these like little characters and stuff. And we were having fun while we were doing it. Let's see if I can get this on the other side. And we were having fun while we were doing it. So I think that there's a there's power to just kind of getting out of your ego and just like looking at a blank page and then just forcing yourself to draw stuff. Because uh, what's interesting is as we were drawing these silly, you know, drawings, and I'll probably upload this a little bit later, you know, so you guys can actually see more of that. But uh, <coughs> I think if you are to force yourself to do anything on a blank piece of paper, it should be just, hey, I was going to draw something random. I'm going to draw a bucket of chicken. I'm going to draw a giraffe with long, flowing, beautiful hair. I'm going to draw a shark. I'm going to draw a zombie. You know? And then as you do that, you'll be like, oh, hey, you know, you get the, you get the juices flowing. You start having fun. You start relaxing. You stop trying. And then the ideas come to you. All righty, people. So thank you once again for tuning in live on Ustream, joining me for another Thoughtful Thursday, or I guess the first genuine thoughtful thursday we're gonna be doing this again next week you guys have a great weekend people on youtube thumbs up if you like it thumbs down if you don't my name is keenan lafferty you guys take care of yourselves and i'll see you next time